Hello? We'd like to remind you and everybody in the audience now that this is 18 holes stroke play competition for a total purse of $10,000 in prize money with $7,000 going to the winner and $3,000 to the loser. Of course, should you finish dead even, $5,000 apiece. And uh, here in Greece, golf is played under the rules of the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St. Andrews, Scotland. Well, since we're playing the uh, RNA rules, have you decided what type of ball you're going to play, what size, Roberto? Well, uh, Gene, I think I could play the small ball. How about you, Tony? I'm going for a big, uh, for a big one, Gene, and I'd go for a bigger one if I could find it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're about ready, so I'll toss the coin. Call it heads or tails. Heads, I shoot first. See that? I'm one down already. It looks like the tail, and Roberto has the honor. <laughs> Good luck to you, fellas. Thank you, George. Well, right here. Here's the fellow who down through the years certainly has to be regarded as one of the best players in the game. Yes, he's probably the greatest player that came out of South America. And I want to tell you that every time you see him, he looks better. He's getting better with age. He's a powerful hitter, but he has one fault. He's always fighting a hook. Mm -hmm. Well, Roberto started his tee shot out to the right, is drawing it in, and catches it right down in the fairway. Boy, he has hit a big record way, way past that crowd. The last couple of years has just become a tremendous golfer. Yes, I was just asking him about his game, and he was telling me that he's not holding those ten-footers like he used to. Mm -hmm. But uh, this should be a terrific match with these two fellas, both powerful hitters. And this fella has a little fall, too. He fights a hook. Well, most good players do at one time or another in their career. Tony didn't hook that. As a matter of fact, if anything, he hit it the other way, a little bit from left to right. He could be somewhere in the center. Off to the right, carried the bunker, and wound up maybe 245 yards or so from the tee in the late rough in among the trees. And he really has quite an easy routine shot to play here because he has plenty of room to get the ball up. Tony is going to hit uh, an eight iron. Uh, Tony pulled it way left way left, caught the fairway, and then bounced off into the uh, rough, so he's going to miss the very Much first better game. than uh, Roberto Di Vicenzo hit his here in the first hole. Better than 280 with that small ball right in the middle of the fairway. And he has a wedge shot of, oh, perhaps a little bit better than 100 yards to the green. And Roberto has pulled his and pulled it well to the left, missed the green, hit in the fringe and trickled onto the edge of the green in the match. 120-odd feet from the hole in light rough playing off hard, baked-out dirt with trees directly in his line. He cannot wedge the ball because he'll have too much height. He has what looks like a six or seven hour try to bump it on the green into the hill. Hit that low driving shot. And is going to trickle it down very close to the pin. What a shot. Looks pretty good for speed. Well, Tony, yeah, on from the 324 yard par four second hole, our slow motion camera vividly recorded the action as the powerful Argentinian unloaded another big drive of close to 300 yards, right down the middle of the fairway. Lima, on the other hand, seemed a trifle late getting the club head through and pushed his second tee shot in a row. It bounced off a pine tree back into the right hand limits of the fairway, some 250 yards out. For his short approach, Tony decided on a pitching wedge. And he hit a beauty which finished the scampion, also chose a wedge. His ball narrowly missed hitting the pin, but finished a disappointing distance pass. Three deep in the match. Right in the heart. Tony Lima will hit a six iron here. Tony started his ball out considerably to the right, and it is going to carry right into the gallery and hit a spectator on the leg, I believe. Seven iron. And he also started it well to the right, but now it is swinging in. Hit almost exactly pin high. On his favor. The likable South American made his air on the other side of the fairway, pushing his drive into a bunker 285 yards out on the right. 
He picked the ball so cleanly with a three iron that hardly a grain of sand was disturbed. And the resulting brilliant 200 yard recovery shot enabled him to scramble a five, match Lima's par. Maybe 26 or 27 feet. Yeah, that's pretty good. And leading by one stroke. Ideal type of shot to hit here, of course, is a controlled hook and draw from right to left out around the angle. Tony has, however, hit it pretty much straight away, if anything, a little bit to the right. And that thing kicks to the right. Well, it stays in the fairway. Just like that hook which crops into his game now and then. Now, he started away to the right, but he hooked it rather sharply. Let's see. Now, that's going to be all right. That ought to be just fine in the fairway. 265 down the right side, and with a following wind, he will hit a 9 iron. And it's going to be up all right. Hit it almost exactly pin high, but again, if you fly on the ball, you can see of about 310 or 15 yards will wedge it. And he has pushed it right in short. George. And doesn't and try to chip this one up close. And that's going to pull up a little bit soon on a mark and have the putt with the grain of close to 30 feet. Gene has a wonderful putt. Go on the back of the green. That one was pretty fast there, George. I was coming down green. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, feel about your front nine in general? Well, I feel like I uh, just got out of jail the way I've been driving the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Roberto, uh... I didn't think you'd leave that one short. Well, I tried to not leave short, but uh, I think I scared a little bit to hit. It's uh -huh. very heavy from, from this way. Grain is very definitely a factor, yeah. isn't it? A lot of it on this particular green. Yeah, well, I would think 34, 36 is pretty good scoring on that nine. Well, that's the best we're going to be able to do. <laughs> <laughs> Can't start again. Back nine remains, Gene. What do you say we get started? Well, let's go. You follow me. Yeah, a 490-yard par five dog leg to the right, playing down a narrow aisle of trees. The slow motion camera captured the tall Californian's whiplash uncoiling as he drove better than 260 yards dead center fairway. DiVincenzo, on the other hand, seemed to let his right hand overpower his left and hooked badly into the adjacent 18th fairway. Although he had driven an equal distance off the tee, Roberto was away due to the angle of the dog leg. He aimed a three iron over the solid wall of trees and smashed a desperate shot in the direction of the blind green hoping to get his ball somewhere close to the putting surface. By contrast, Lima had a completely open shot and tried to get home in two with a forward. He pulled the ball well to the left and watched it head toward trees and gallery. It struck a small building to the left of the green and, as though drawn on a string, reversed its direction and rolled right back to the corner building his opponent had just struck. From better than 100 feet, he had a low running chip with a 9-iron out of some 60 feet with a six iron. He hit it stiff. Point. He went for it boldly, but missed by a fraction of an inch. Big ball. It's kind of a short hole. If you hit it just straight over that double, you can almost drive the green. And he's cut it. He's hit it from left to right. But I believe he hit it far enough to avoid. Of course, somewhere along the line here has to begin to make a move. Now, he hit it way, way right, high and far. And that would be a little left to right cut shot around the trees. Swing outside in with an open face. And he cut it low. Takes a bounce, and he'll run around the green. Right out around the right well, corner. Right out of the right, better than 300 yards off the tee, hitting a sand wedge. It throws around the green. That could be a beautiful shot. That is a beautiful shot. Hit hard against the green. One under par. And stroked a pretty. And he can. 300 yard drive, huh? Oh, a little bit more, I think. How? Oh. Roberto, did you actually mean to hit it that far to the right? 
we aim him. Uh, well, I try hit a uh, high and long, low, long ball, and I think I catch this time. I try to make three here because the other way I'd be dead. Well, you hit that ball, according to everybody's guesses, about 325 or 30 yards. Maybe. That's a big shot. Yeah. I think I'd be lucky after lunch. <laughs> <laughs> but you had a three. After good breakfast this morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, if Roberto picks up his three now, and you slip back to one under par, and you're only behind by two strokes after the charged charged up Diva Sunzo continued with the honor. His drive soared upward against the gray green mountains and the deep blue sky of Greece. It bounced over a huge bunker and scattering a knot of spectators, came to rest on a grassy knoll, just short and to the right. Oh, perhaps Slima began to press a bit. In any event, he caught the ball right on the heel of a club face, and it faded farther and farther and farther to the right, until it came to a stop less than 15 feet from an out-of-bounds fence. Fortunately for Tony, he had finished in newly solid rough, clearly labeled ground under repair, and was entitled to relief without penalty. So he dropped his ball outside the ground under it was no more than 65 yards. Lima's pitching wedge carried the pin and he chose to play the ball just as it lay. And his sand wedge pulled up. take a six hand and try to hit it up over those trees and he also has a bunker to carry right in his line. And you got to walk up over the trees, hit it a little bit left. I must try to take a four and cut the ball around low and knock it somewhere near the green. He got it out, got it into the air. And he got it on the green. 55 feet from the hole with the downhill putt. Gene, that is against the green, right? Yes, this is apt to fool him, you know. It looks like it's fast down there, but it's very slow as putting against the mountain. No, he hit it. Boy. Look out. He hit 45 that ball. feet. And that's a beautiful putt. Who does? He made it. He's cutting too good. Isn't Beautiful yes, floor after being under the trees. How you like this, my friend putt? <laughs> well, he was due for one. I putt like for Oh, Roberto you Vicenzo. fantastic, Tony. I know why everybody calls champagne, Tony. You know? <laughs> well, one hole to go. Tony Lima, four under par. Roberto Di Vicenzo, three under par. As we go to the 18th Here's hole. Tony Lima, one stroke ahead. Roberto Di Vicenzo, one stroke behind. Fairway, the width of a bowling alley. And Tony has hit the ball a little bit left to right. Hits in the fairway. And may go through the fairway to the edge of the rock. Yeah, his typical right to left tee shot here will be in great shape. Oh, what a drive. That is perfect. That is perfect. Right to left, right down in the tight. He debated between a two iron and a three iron for a considerable length of time and is now going to hit a two. He has hit a low screamer, which hits on the green, and he could not hold the green, I don't believe. Yes, he just went to the back. And he has but a six iron remaining with his opponent on the green and two. He's hit it high. Pitches on the green and holds the green. Did he get it? Did he hit it? No. A little bit on the left hand side, but he gets 3,000 to the loser. And he makes it.
Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. We'll all get in on yeah. this act. Yeah, we'll all get in on well, this huh? I'm sorry. You played wonderful golf. And I want to congratulate you. That was a great performance. And you, I want to congratulate you for your great round of golf. It was great. And on behalf of the Shell Oil Company, we want to thank both of you. Well, thank you, Gene. I, I always feel it's a real pleasure to play with my one of my dearest Latin friends, Roberto DiVicenzo. I think he's uh, one of the greatest in the world, and it's just a pleasure to play golf with him. And I'd also like to thank Shell for the three wonderful trips they've given me so far. Well, uh, uh, Tony, yeah. You all the time you beat me. Uh -huh. huh? <laughs> but I, I wait for you next year. Huh? Okay. Uh, maybe we can do something about that, too, because yeah. that all happened with a...